Okay, welcome to this series on how to use the Landscape Generator 2. Uh, to start, you will need to add a Landscape Generator object to your scene. So what you're going to want to do is go to Untitled Tools, Landscape Generator, New Landscape Generator. Click that and you get a Landscape Generator object. Um, the landscape generator object has the general settings, terrain settings, detail settings, tree settings, water settings, and detail object settings, and three buttons so far. I will be going over the general settings, the terrain settings, and the detail settings in this video, and in the next video I will be going over the tree settings, water settings, and detail object settings. Okay, so first of all, to start, if you want to add a landscape generator object to your scene without going to this here, you can go to the uh, ob create object menu, create an object, any object, and go to add component, until tools, landscape generator, landscape generator, that will also add a landscape generator object to your scene. Okay, the general settings. So if we just click this little drop down here, as you can see, the UI has been completely redone to make it a lot easier and easier to navigate for the user experience. So the general settings are pretty self-explanatory. The auto generate button uh, if you hover over any one of these settings, it will tell you what it does. The auto generate button uh, combines every button into one button, like that. So when you click this, it will uh, destroy the landscape, then generate the landscape, then finish the landscape. So in that order. If you want to generate each part of the landscape separately, you can click the Generate Separately button, and that will give you more buttons for generation. You can generate terrain, trees, water, detail objects, and you can destroy or compile the terrain. The Use Player button if you click this and you say and you select a player I don't have a player in my scene but say you had a player object here you could select this player and it put the player on the terrain anywhere on the terrain um, when you click generate okay So now we have our general settings gone over. That was pretty simple. The terrain, setting, the terrain settings are probably the most complicated out of all of them. So first of all, you can select a terrain you already have if you want to generate objects on that terrain. I don't have any here. I know there's uh, five terrains, I believe, four or five that come with the landscape generator package and you can generate uh, objects and trees and grass on the on the terrain if you don't want to use your own terrain and you want the generator to create the terrain select the use procedural terrain in this version of the generator you do not have to select a procedural terrain object it will create an object from scratch. Okay, so we're going to use a procedural terrain. If you want your terrain to be an island, you can click the Islandify button. If you don't, you can uncheck it, leave it unchecked. So if you're using a procedural terrain, you're going to want to use these procedural settings here. These are the settings for uh, the 
lacunarity, persistence, octaves, and scale of the terrain, as long with a, a couple other settings for map sizes, as you can see here. So I'll go over that in a second after I go over the sand height and all these texture layer blend settings. Uh, the terrain textures will be applied to a terrain um, here as you can see if you read it it says if you're not procedurally generating the terrain this is the terrain that textures details trees and detail objects will be generated on so the textures will be generated on uh, a non-procedural terrain and a procedural terrain uh, the albedo textures, uh, there's four texture layers, okay, there's grass, dirt, rock, and sand, and there will be a snow layer added in the future, but it is not currently in this version of the generator. The grass layer is where you will put your grass texture, so for instance, uh, we can use the standard assets grass hill albedo texture for our grass uh, and same for the dirt uh, rock um, is like cliffs so where there's a steep drop off you're gonna want to use a rock texture and that's right here and sand, that's pretty self-explanatory. It's a sand texture. Okay. So these albedo textures are the main textures applied to the um, terrain. They are the diffuse textures, basically. The normal maps are the bump maps on the terrain so I believe the only one that has a normal map is mud and we didn't use mud yeah right here so we're not going to use normal maps but you can put normal maps in here and you don't have to have all of the fields filled in for it to work so you can pick and choose same with the textures although if you don't have the dirt or sand filled in or rock it's just going to use the grass texture you have to have this grass texture filled in okay smoothness is how smooth the texture appears so if you want it really plastically plasticky or smooth you can turn this up and this is just for all the layers, grass, dirt, rock, and sand. Metallic is how metallic the texture is. So how metal does it look? You can turn those up if you want it to be more metallic. The specular colors uh, if you want your textures to be shiny, you should turn these to something besides black. Uh, default is black, which is just matte. There's no shininess to the, um, the textures. I'm just going to turn these all up to white. So wherever there's... Um, wherever light reflects off the textures, where it's smooth, it will appear white. You can have it red or something if you want, like, I don't know, a bloody texture or something. The sand height is the actual height of the sand in world space, the sand layer. So I would set that to something like 10. The rocky blend is the blend factor uh, between rock and grass. So if you turn this down, uh, there is less rock. But if you turn this up, 
there is maximum rock. So you're probably going to want to have this around somewhere around 0 0.8. This is just basically the power of the rock on the terrain. The dirt rock blend is um, how much the the blend layers the, it goes grass dirt and then rock so as it gets steeper it turns to dirt and then it turns to rock okay so this is how much dirt you want on the terrain 0 0.5 is a good number the dirt weight is how apparent the dirt is so if you want the dirt to really show you can turn this up to something like four don't do that they'll look really strange I would keep it around something like two okay let's go over the procedural settings next oh so when you open up the procedural settings tab you'll see a bunch of settings that don't make too much sense. You can hover over them to see what they do. They're documented pretty well. So we're going to start with the map sizes uh, drop down here. As you can see it's set to 512. This is the actual texture size of the height map and detail map, splat map, all of those. It sets it to these map sizes here and you can set it from anything to 2 to 8192 if you want although that will take a long time to generate I wouldn't do that I wouldn't do I would stick with something from either 256 to 4096 if you really want your terrain to be huge uh, the detail map res is the detail map resolution this is the resolution of the grass on the train so if you set this to something like 1024 you're gonna want to set this to 1024 2048 I would keep this around uh, 512 to 2048 okay the detail the detail map res per pixel is the resolution of the detail map per pixel which means how much how detailed is the grass in each chunk because the map splits grass up into chunks basically and 8 or 16 or 32 are good numbers for these I found or 4 to 16 4 to 32 basically the terrain size is the literal size of the terrain in world space it's pretty self-explanatory um, it comes preset to 1150 to 1000 by 1000 I would leave it on that if you want to normal generic terrain if you don't you can set this up to something like 300 that's nice uh, smooth iterations uh, the this new landscape generator can smooth the terrain and this is how many iterations it'll smooth it by so if you really want a smooth terrain you can have it set to 10 or something this is for if you want a detailed terrain but you also want to be smooth. The seed is the seed of the terrain. Uh, every terrain has a unique seed. If you generate a terrain with a certain seed and you keep that seed and all the settings and you generate it again, it will look exactly the same. It will be the same terrain. So this is just for variety. So if I set this to something like that, it will make a different terrain with the same settings. Okay. Lacunarity. Okay. This is where it gets a little confusing. 
each when it generates the terrain it generates the terrain in layers so it will generate however many uh, when you set the octaves here it'll generate that many maps so for instance I set it to five it'll generate five height maps and layer them on top of each other to add detail each one gets progressively more detailed and this is how fast they get more detailed I would leave this at two um, uh, one to two is a good number anywhere in between there three maybe persistence is how much each layer each octave is what they're called um, affects the terrain so each new height map that it generates how much effect will that portray the terrain scale is the scale of the terrain if you set it to something lower there will be more features uh, it's packed into a smaller space if you set it to something higher there will be less it's pretty simple this is new this is probably one of the most powerful tools in the whole terrain generation terrain generation system it's the height scale curve this is what each octave will be multiplied by to create a unique look to each of the terrains so if we open this up we can see that it by default is set to this curve here the old generator used this curve just linear okay if you want there to be like cliffs or something you can have this here this curve think of when you're making a curve if it's kind of what you want your terrain to look like so if you make a curve like this there's gonna be steep cliffs here there's gonna be some bumps on top of them and there's gonna be weird mountains like this and then a little riverbed here okay this is a little bit different of a curve here this will make like bumps and then little bumps up here okay the octaves like I said before is how many uh, height maps will be applied to the base height map so how many detail layers there will be okay I think that finishes up the procedural settings let's move on to the detail settings this is grass that will be generated on the train and this time grass is generated correctly on the train you can apply grass textures tall grass textures to um, different terrain textures so if I check details enabled this will add grass to our terrain and you will need to set uh, grass here so if I set this to 1 okay and I go to element 0 here this is one grass texture if I set this to 2, you can have element 1, and they have a second grass texture here. Let's stay with one grass texture for now. All of them will be generated on the terrain with their specific settings. So we're going to need to set most of these settings here. So you're going to want to set the grass texture to be one of your grass textures. I'm just going to use the ones from the standard assets here. Let's use this one that was in the trailer. And we're going to want to set these colors to be so around here. How do you want it to look when it's dry and how do you want it to look when it's healthy? Something like that. So it just tints it basically the healthy color and the dry color. And most of these settings are just straight taken from the um, 
Unity terrain system. So like the noise spread is how spread out the how how spread out the noise of the grasses and the bend factor is how much it bends. You get the idea. I'll be going over texture layers in a second. The detail resolution is how detailed, how much grass you want to be, how accurate it is basically, how accurate the generator is. I would set this to 8 or 16 or 4, somewhere in between here. The You're going to want to have to you're gonna have to set the detail height and the detail width or else no grass will show up. I recommend setting this from something to 0 0.3 to 1 or maybe 0 0.5. The grass render type you're one gonna use either grass or grass billboard don't use grass or don't use vertex lit that will mess up how your grass looks. It's for detail objects, but the actual detail objects here are included as trees. They use the tree renderer, but they are detail objects, basically. So I'm going to leave that on billboard. So these texture layers, if you open this up and you add a texture layer here. If you hover over it, you can see the layers of the alpha map that the grass will be generated on. So zero is the grass layer, one is the dirt layer, two is the rock layer, three is the sand layer. This goes back to the text, terrain textures here. As you can see, the grass, dirt, rock, sand here. So if I set this to zero, it will generate, if you hover over again, it will generate on grass only. If I add another one and set it to 3, it will generate on grass and sand. If I set this to 1, it'll generate on dirt and grass. And if I set this to 2, it'll generate on rock and dirt. And you get the idea. You can add more. There's no real point in going above four here because there's only four layers. Doesn't really make any sense. Won't do anything. I'm just going to want to set this to grass for now. So I just generate grass on the grass texture. Okay. So that will be it for this video. In the next video, we will be going over the tree settings, water settings, detail object settings, and possibly the buttons. And in the video after that, I will be going over the uh, new height map wizard, where you can import and export height maps uh, to your terrain. Okay. See you in the next video.